1942, Japanese forces captured James Clavel, a young officer in the Royal Artillery. He ended up in Changi, the infamous Japanese prisoner of war camp, which is in Singapore, and his prison became the most profound experience of Clavel's life. And in his own words, he explained it as being his university instead of his prison. And it left a deep imprint on his life. For years, he carried a can of sardines with him while also fighting an impulse to rummage through the trash for food. But it also provided the subject material for his first novel, King Rat. And this presented a semi-fictionalized account of his experience as a prisoner of war. But just years of captivity in his prison left Clavel with no hatred. To the contrary, it instilled a deep and sustained admiration for Japan and its people. He would write what he described as a passionately pro-Japanese book. And it went on to become Shogun. So it goes without saying that the original Shogun novel was a rare phenomenon. Over 1,200 pages and over 400,000 words in life. And in my case, because I prefer audiobooks, 53 and a half hours long. So it's no easy commitment. You know, not everyone has time. But even so, when the novel first released in 1975, it was insanely successful, and it stayed on the best-selling list for more than 30 weeks, and it sold just millions of copies. And the novel presented a fictionalized account of a real event, and this was the arrival of an English pilot, William Adams, and this was in Japan in year 1600. And Clavel reimagined the story just giving it his own hero, who he renamed John Blackthorn, and he put him in Japan's chaotic political climate. And this would be in the months leading up to the epic Battle of Sekigahara. And this was like the Gettysburg of Japan. It would go on to forever change the country and the government. And this would result in over 250 years of peace in Japan. So this was a major part in Japanese history. But when the novel first released, some historians criticized it as being full of errors, and also having national stereotypes. But others like Henry Smith championed the book. He argued that it conveyed more information about Japan to more people than all the combined writings of scholars, journalists, and novelists since the Pacific War. But five years after its publication, and millions of dollars later, Shogun made its way to television, and this is in the form of a five-episode miniseries. And that too was a massive hit. It brought in a massive audience, and it estimated at more than 120 million people. And this really was the first miniseries event. It was said to be such a big deal that when it first premiered, restaurants were actually going out of business because everyone was just home watching it. And I even asked my dad and other people that were just around when the show came out, and pretty much everyone says the same thing. It was just a huge event. Everyone was watching it, even if you weren't in the samurai. But even so, when that series came out, Novel enthusiasts complain how it just flipped the story and focused more on the European aspect. And it really just pushed the Japanese drama aside. But its main goal was to make Western audiences feel like they were in the shoes of the English pilot. And just being trapped on this hostile alien country where no one speaks your language. And the show went even as far as to not even subtitle it. So when characters would speak Japanese, you just wouldn't know what they were saying. But for all the historians that defended the book, they in turn did not defend the miniseries. 
And we're going through something similar right now with Shogun 2024. And I explained this in my series review, but this series pretty much did the opposite of the 1980 series. Instead of focusing on John and the Europeans, it focused more on Toronaga and the Japanese. And it's also interesting because where the 1980 series was all in English, most of this new series is in Japanese. Of course, they actually put subtitles in this time. And what's interesting is that this new adaptation is actually performing really well in Japan where the 1980 series performs poorly. But part of that has to do with the Japanese only getting a really butchered down version of that miniseries. I believe they cut it down to about two hours, so it, there's no way that could have been good. I gave my word to be married and took a sweet vow in return. But either way, it's safe to say that neither television adaptation that we've gotten really show the full story of what James Clavell wanted to tell. And now that really leads us to the point of this video. Should you read the novel? And I don't blame you if you're hesitant to pick up the book. It is long, it's a big commitment, and not everyone has time for it. And even I just don't really feel like just picking up a novel and reading it. And that's why I went for the audiobook. It's the best way to manage your time. But what I notice is that now they're selling the audiobook in two parts. And that's weird because when I got it a few years ago, it was just one book and costed one credit. But it seems now that they're just getting greedy with this stuff. It really should just be one book. I don't see where they would split it into two anyway. But yeah, like I said, it's a big commitment though. It's a really long book. You are becoming quite Japanese. And now that I've watched both series, and I've read the entire novel, I'm gonna be honest, I don't actually like the story of Shogun. My master is in here! My master is in here! Help me! <laughs> and that may seem odd because I've done like 20 videos on it, but yeah, it's not really a story I like. I mean, I do like aspects of it. I for one love samurai. I love the time period and setting. And I do like a lot of the characters in it. But the story itself is just very nihilistic. It's also very cynical. And none of the characters are actually good. It's kind of hard to root for any of them. And at the end of the day, there's no real point to it at all. And just without spoiling anything, I'll say the way it ends is a bit of a downer. And maybe this was the mood that Clovel was just trying to go for. You know, he had a pretty rough life it looked like. But in the world of Shogun, there's no good, there's only people trying to end up on top. And you're just reading it to see who wins in the end. And maybe the story was just something of the time period when it came out. I've noticed that a lot of 70s media is pretty dark and gritty. It's also very nihilistic. So maybe it's just the time period. I've seen horrors. Horrors that you've seen. And I've already mentioned this a few times in my other reviews. And it is more of a personal issue, so just keep that in mind. But if you've read the novel of Shogun, then you know that the Christians are depicted as villains. You will be scourged. And just having the main characters refer to the enemies as just Christians, and just having scenes where they're making people stomp on an image of Christ and then behead them and then act like it's nothing, and this is all just being done by the characters you're supposed to be rooting for. It all just doesn't really sit right. And just picture this the other way around. Picture a different religion being treated in the same fashion. And just have them stomp on an image of their faith. And I've basically already made my point. This would never happen even in the 70s. 
And even me just talking about it, I'd probably be banned from YouTube. So I don't really want to preach anyone about this, that's just my personal issue with the story. That doesn't mean it's your issue. Keep silent and obey. But really, this novel has to be viewed differently today than when it first came out in 1975. You kind of have to just put it in that context. And back then, the average American knew very little about Japanese culture and just almost nothing about Japanese history and samurai. Shogun was a first introduction to Japanese culture to most Westerners. And just Westerners knew nearly nothing about it. And that was a big reason for its success back then. It was something new and exciting. And it was educational. But today, you know, we have the internet, Japanese culture, too, is just very popular now. And that's especially with just media like anime and movies. And we just know more information about Japan than ever before. Also, there's just plenty of great YouTube channels dedicated to Japanese history. And today, you can't really make Japan into this exotic, unknown place anymore. It has nowhere near the same impact that it had back in 1975 or even 1980 when the first series came out. And a lot of this novel you could just see the fascination that Clavel had. And it's especially just emphasized in its depiction of their sexuality, really their openness to it. Place is about physical pleasure, which it is. And even the more stranger sexual stuff that people really weren't used to back then. Please ask her to play. And for example, there's a scene where the main characters are being led into this sex dungeon. And it's with the expensive prostitute Kiku. And it's here that we get plenty of just descriptions of sex toys. And we're even told that every woman in Japan satisfies herself with one of these toys and that it would be a shame if they didn't have them oh don't worry it's not a threat to you you know it is a bit much but what i found kind of stupid but also kind of hilarious when you look at it but it's in this sex dungeon where the main protagonist john gets an epiphany and falls in love with japan nothing's wrong at this moment, nothing in the whole world. And he also just starts hating on his country for being horrible for not having the same kind of lifestyle. And it's just moments like this where you kind of just shake your head and it becomes an erotic novel in a way. And, you know, a lot of it is just male fantasies, you know, the exoticness. And you saw more of this in the 1980 series. But surprisingly, in the new one, it's just completely absent. And when you read the novel now, it almost seems very modern because we're still having some of these same conversations, you know, about homosexuality and stuff. But again, I'm pretty amazed that the new series didn't really get into this stuff. You know, Game of Thrones for sure would have jumped right on this. But I will mention too that there is historical inaccuracies in this novel, and it's evident that not everything was researched well. And there's uses of the word ninja, and just having them wear black pajamas. And at least the new Shogun series actually called them shinobi instead of ninja. But also you get the stereotypical, you know, samurai being against the use of firearms. And this has been disproven, it's wrong. Samurai in reality would jump on any new weapon that would give them an advantage in battle. No one really cared if the weapon was dishonorable or not. You know, weapons are just used to kill. And we unfortunately still see this stereotype. And I wonder if it all started from this novel. But besides that, Still, a ton of research went into this novel, and you could just tell. And I did find myself learning some new things. And what I found most fascinating was just the differences in cultures that they point out. 
And what amazes me the most is just the fact that Europeans didn't bathe. Two baths in a week. You know, I just can't imagine that. That would smell horrible. These women can assist you in preparation for your bath. Uh, thank you, but I've already bathed. But that was some time ago. And it was interesting how the Japanese back then were all about cleanliness. And that's been proven today that being clean will keep you healthier. And at first, John is just disgusted with having to take a bath. They used to believe that it would actually make you sick. But then after he starts doing it, he ends up loving it. Same with the Japanese clothing. And I always thought the Japanese clothing just looked so comfortable. It's like wearing sweatpants almost. And we see too that after he's adapted to this new lifestyle, he's not able to go back. And there's just great scenes like this when he revisits his crew. And you could tell he's disgusted by their uncleanliness. But also just the fact that he used to be like that. And I also liked how the novel really didn't shy away in showing how brutal the Sengoku time period was. And it really was just a brutal time period to be in. And it really describes to you in detail. And you could just compare some of the depths in the novel to both shows. And you'll know what I mean. You know, what you thought was brutal in the show, and then you read it, it's like, to another level. But it also really teaches you the mindset at the time. You know, stuff like why the samurai would kill themselves so willingly. And by the end of the novel, you understand their mindset. And I think that's just a massive achievement. So if you like the show, then you really need to read the novel. Because like I said, both adaptations only focus on one aspect. The 1980 focused on the European and the 2024 focused more on the Japanese. But you could also just watch both series back to back and you would pretty much get the full story. It would also set you back 20 hours, but it's also quicker than reading the book. But I do just want to warn you that the 1980 adaptation is a little outdated. You know, the visuals and especially the music choice. So just keep in mind that, you know, this is an older show, but it still is really well made. Anyway, this is definitely just a great novel. It's a classic, but I can't say it's as effective today as it was back then. You know, I could just imagine reading it back then and knowing nothing about Japan or samurai culture and just how fascinating that would be. And unfortunately, I experienced this story only recently. So this review is just with that in mind. And I will say, when I was reading it, I was interested, but it still wasn't something I was just glued to. I didn't have that addiction to it. You know, some novels really just do that. And I did at times have to force myself just to finish it. So I recommend watching the show first and just seeing if you're interested in the story and characters. And then you could check out the novel for the full story. Anyway, let me know what you think of the novel. Did you experience it when it first released? And if that's so, was there little information of Japanese culture and also samurai back then? Please let me know in the comments. And if you want to discuss more topics like this, I have a free Discord. And if you want to keep the channel afloat, I have a Patreon and you can support me that way. You can find both links in the description below. And like always, thanks for watching.